Well, hello and welcome to Winning in Prayer. I am Pastor Daryl. So glad to be with you again. Listen, I want to get right to the word on today. We are going to be talking about the word behind it. Now, we're going to be coming from one of my favorite scriptures. It's Isaiah 30, 21. Prayerfully, you're going to get something from this that's going to encourage you. Uh, that's going to enhance your walk with God, that's going to stretch you, but most importantly, cause you to see things from a different point of view. So again, we're talking about the word behind thee, the word behind thee. Isaiah 30, 21 says, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Now, Again, this scripture became one of my favorite scriptures years ago when um, I was a younger man. It just spoke volumes to me. Now, what you're going to understand is, come to understand is, uh, this is ac actually a promise to Israel. Uh, there's some problems going on here in this 30th chapter of Isaiah. Uh, Israel is estranged uh, from God uh, again. Uh, at this point, and uh, you're going to see that this 21st verse actually ends up being a promise to them. And so I want you to understand, You it may, maybe, it, maybe it sounds a little strange to you, the word behind it, the word behind it, but I want you to understand that, you know, the word behind you or the, as the Bible says, it's, it's, it's pushing you it's it's course correcting, uh, it's guiding, it's opening and closing doors. And I know we don't really uh, consider that God does actually close doors that are not for you. But I want you to understand that the word behind you, it's actually opening uh, and closing uh, doors for you. It's 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 uh, it's making ways. It's it's protecting. It's it's uh, uh, it's it's favoring you. The word behind you is doing all of these things, favoring you. Uh, it's providing. It's it's healing. It's uprooting. You know, it's good to have the right person behind you. Glory to God. Uh, the right person or the right organization. It's good to have. Uh, the right person or the right organization behind you. Again, I want you to understand that we're talking about the word behind you. Uh, the children of Israel had uh, a cloud behind them and in between them and their enemy. We're talking about the word behind you. What's behind you? What's, what's pushing you? What's, what's course correcting? Uh, what's, what's, favoring you? What's causing favor to go ahead of you? What's opening and closing doors for you? What's uh, uh, favoring and providing and healing and uprooting? What's behind you? What do you have behind you? You know, it's, good, it's always good to have a big brother or big sister behind you or even uh, a mom or dad, but what's behind you? Again, I want you to understand. I want you to consider What's going before you? What's making a way? What's what's uh, opening and closing doors? What's causing favor to go ahead? Uh, what's going ahead of you and protecting and uh, 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 moving things and rearranging things that they favor you? Again, we're talking about the word behind the the word behind the. I want you to understand it's behind, when you're behind, it's a, a vantage point that gives an added advantage. You know, the word can see higher, wider, uh, can direct, protect, uphold you. We're talking about the word behind thee. You know, when there's impending danger, uh, it can propel you forward. When there's a needed separation between you uh, and your enemy, um, from people, from circumstances. It's, it's, and, and I want you to also know the word behind you is one thing, 
But then you being able to recognize that word, recognize the voice of God, it's vital for you and I to know the voice of God. And again, I want you to know the word behind thee, it's 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 an it's an uh it's a vantage point that gives uh an, an added advantage. You know, I can remember when my, my son was was small and he uh, was beginning to ride his bicycle, I could stand behind him. I could see if there was any danger coming. I could see what was going on around him. I could tell him when he needed to slow down. I could tell him, you know, uh, uh, what, what was coming. I could tell him when he needed to prepare to turn. The word behind you, it has, it's, it's, an, it's a vantage point uh, that gives an added advantage. So I don't want you to feel like uh, you're at a, a disadvantage at all. I want you to understand that the word behind you can see what you can see. It knows what you don't know. It knows uh, if there's impending danger. It knows when it needs to propel you forward uh, because there's separation needed between you uh, and, 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 and maybe some danger, uh, from the enemy, uh, from a situation or a circumstance, a lie, a, a betrayal, the word behind thee, but that word behind you won't do you any good if you're not able to recognize it or recognize the voice of the one that is choosing to direct protect, provide, open doors, course correct. It won't do you any good if you're not able to recognize the voice of the one that comes to do what only he can do. Glory to God. I want you to understand that you are, are missing out on a great deal, a, 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 a great part of a relationship if all you if all you're doing is putting a bunch of words out there and just expecting for things to happen i want you to know you are missing out on a great portion of your relationship it requires intimacy to recognize a word that's course correcting that's opening and closing doors that's making ways that's saying yes to saying no it takes intimacy to recognize it it takes intimacy to know the voice of God. And he's not always zapping mountains, but sometimes he can speak to you in the, in, in, in the stillness of your situation. If you can allow your situation to become still. And see, that's another thing where maturity comes in. When a situation is happening, we are to get quiet so that we can hear when he says, Turn to the right, turn to the left. He, he says here that uh, uh, this is the way, walk ye in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. Now, if, if you're in a situation that's loud, that's boisterous, and then all of that's in your spirit, you will never hear when he says, turn to the right, turn to the left. This is the way. You, you won't hear any of those things. Any of those things that come uh, for course correction, you, won't, you will miss out on those things. Why? Because if your situation is loud, you can't have that in your spirit. You have to become quiet. It takes intimacy. It takes trust. And it takes for maturity to get quiet when everything in your life is loud and blaring. One thing I want you to understand is that we don't want to carry, carry the situation on the inside of us. We don't want to allow what's going on on the outside to, be, to get on the inside of us. Glory to God. Glory to God. We don't want what's on the outside to get, get on the inside. He said, this is the way, walk you in it when you turn to the right, when you turn to the left. You'll miss out on all of that. If the noise of life is allowed to get on the inside of you. Now, let's go forward here. Isaiah 30 
and one, it says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. They're trusting in an evil counsel, uh, a covering that wasn't the God of Israel. Uh, Judah had aligned themselves with Egypt. They, they, have, they have made a choice that wasn't God. They have made a choice that wasn't God. And you know, if we if we be honest, we we have we've made choices where we really haven't consulted God. And then we have to bear the weight of that decision. Well, you know, I've i my wife and I have been going trying to make a decision um, over something, and, and it's been the last two years. And you know why it's taken two years? Because I've made some decisions in my life, and then I've had to bear the weight of those those decisions. Do you hear me? I've made some decisions, then I've had to bear the weight of those decisions. But at this point of my life, at this juncture in my life, whatever I'm doing, I want to make sure that I'm doing it because it's what God wants for me to do. I want to I want to do it because it's uh, the purpose of God for my life. You see, I don't want to spend any. I don't want to spend any more time spinning my wheels in the mud, so to speak, over choices that I've made. Anything that I'm doing, any choice that I make, I want to make sure that it's a God choice for my life, for my marriage, for my family, for my ministry. Anybody can just, you know, be, make rash decisions and, you know, decisions off of instinct and things like that. No, no, no. I want to make my my decisions. I want them to be a God decision. But here, here, Israel are making, they're making decisions based off their desires, their wants, their needs. And they've decided in a covering that wasn't the God of Israel. In a, a verse two, it says, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth. Again, they've made a decision. They've made a decision, haven't consulted God. Glory to God. How many times have you made a decision without consulting God? It says, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Listen, I want you to understand, you can't make a choice based on what things look like just because something looks like it could possibly be prosperous uh, be, uh because the promise of something um, seems that it can be prosperous you can't make decisions based off of what it looks like you have to make a decision based off what god is saying and so israel is making making terrible decisions here they're trying to strengthen themselves based off something that has never provided for them. Their, 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 their choice is uh, the strength of Pharaoh and in the shadow of Egypt. So they're trusting in something that has never. Pharaoh didn't bring them out of Egypt. It was God that brought them out of Egypt. And I hate to say it, but sometimes we make choices just like this. Uh, uh, we choose our jobs over over God. We choose people over God. Sometimes we choose relationships over God and where he's trying to lead us. And so the Bible helps us understand that they're making a, a choice without seeking God. I want to challenge you that in this year of 2022, that any major decision that you have to make, make sure that you're including God. And if you have to wait, be mature enough to wait. If you have to wait, be mature enough to continue seeking him, to consent, to continue being intimate with God. Don't be put off if you have to wait. Don't become upset. Uh, don't become uh, uh, indifferent with God because you have to wait. Sometimes in the waiting God grows us up. He matures us. He gets us to a place that we can trust him. He gets us to a place where we can hear him. He gets us to a new place where we can see him. So don't be put off. In 2022, don't be put off if, if there's a waiting period to what you're seeking God for. Glory to God. I need you to hear me on today. 
I want you to understand, don't be put off in 2022 if there's a waiting period to what you're seeking and asking God for. Any major decision in 2022, it's worth bathing it, it in prayer. It's worth taking the time to settle down, continue being intimate with God, continue seeking God, continue putting his word on the situation, continue uh, pursuing God until he actually gives you an, a definite answer, a definite answer. And I want you to understand, God can answer you in many different ways. He can answer you from his word. He can answer you through prayer. He can answer you through a conversation with someone. And I don't, I don't want you to just be locked into hearing, to just hearing. You know, my prayer here recently is, I, I ask God, I don't want to be locked into just you answering me audibly. because. Uh, you can do, you can answer me in many ways. Again, he can answer me from his word. He can answer me through prayer. So be open to how God is going to answer. Glory to God. And even that takes a, a, a level of trust and a, a level of intimacy. Glory to God. You need to go after God in a new way in, in this year of 2022. And the third verse, it says, um, third verse, it says, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Listen, what you're trusting in is going to bring you shame and it's going to bring you confusion when it's not of God. What you're trusting in will bring you shame and what you're depending on will bring you confusion when it is not God. I'm going to skip down to the seventh verse. Seventh verse says, For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. So that seventh verse lets you know what you're trusting in. It's going to bring you shame. It's going to bring you confusion. Then it lets you know that they're not, they're not going to be any help in the eleventh verse. And their help will be in vain. Glory to God. Listen to, listen to that. When your choice is not of God, there's shame, there's confusion. You're not going to receive the help that you thought you were going to receive. The help will be in vain. Glory to God. When you are making decisions that are not of God, there's shame, there's confusion, and the help will be in vain. My God, my God. The ninth verse, it says, this is that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. So they have become stubborn. They have become stubborn. They don't want to hear a real word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They don't want to hear a real word. They don't want to hear a real word. Why? Because they know a real word will, br will bring change. Glory to God. Glory to God. It says that there are rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. You know, you have a choice in the matter. Either you're going to hear, you're going to hear and then adhere to the word that you're hearing, or your choice could be that you just absolutely don't want to hear the word of God. And I want you to understand, if we're honest, there are those of us that do not want to hear the word of God. Why? Because we know that if we hear the word of God, it will bring change. And that's what the word is saying here. They're rebellious people. They're lying children that have chosen not to hear the law of the Lord. Why? Because they know what, that the word of the Lord will bring change. The word of the Lord will cause deliverance. The, the word of the Lord will course correct. The word of the Lord will bring you out. The word of the Lord will cause change. The word of the Lord, again, I want to tell you this again, the word of the Lord will course correct. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But they have chosen not to hear the word of the Lord. Let me let me read verse 15 to you. It says, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning in rest, 
shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. Now, what this verse is saying is this is supposed to be the reality. Uh, in returning and rest, they will be saved. It goes on to say, quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. But it says, and ye would not. That was supposed to be their reality. I want you to understand that in 2022, that in returning and rest, you shall be saved. What are you saying, Pastor? What are you saying, Pastor? You're returning to God. You're returning to God and rest, you shall be saved. Yes, you, the same way that in these last few years, you have felt like you you have gone away from God because you felt like you needed to do it. You've made some decisions that have, that have taken you away from God, that has strained your relationship with God. Well, it's in your returning and your rest in him that you're going to be saved, that your marriage is going to be saved, that your family is going to be saved. It's re returning and rest, returning to him, making a choice for him, and then resting in that. What do you mean resting? I don't mean I don't mean getting your uh, uh, your nicest blanket and your most comfortable pillow and, and taking a nap. No, that's not what I mean. What I mean is resting from you feeling like you can do it. Resting from you trying to figure it out. Resting from you trying to make a way. Resting from you thinking that you know it all. Resting from thinking that you have all the answers. Well, in these last few years that you've been trying to do it yourself, how successful have you been? How much anxiety have you experienced? How much depression have you experienced? How much pressure have you experienced? How many times have you asked, God, where are you? But you made the decision to try to do it yourself. And any decision that you make that doesn't include God, you're going to have to bear the weight of that decision. Glory to God. So it says in returning and rest, this can set up your, your year of 2020, 20, 2022 for success. Let me say that again. This verse alone can set up you for success in 2022 and beyond in returning and rest shall ye be saved hallelujah hallelujah in returning and rest shall you be saved in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength quietness quietness in your spirit quietness in your soul hallelujah confidence how confident have you been the last few years? Hallelujah. How strong have you been the last couple of years? Hallelujah. There's no way in the world I would have wanted to uh, have to uh, go through these last couple of years without having a relationship with God. Hallelujah. 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 I thank God that in this last year, he hasn't allowed my life to be overran by anxiety and depression and uh, uh, pressure, the pressure of life. And uh, I haven't uh, given in and taken down and uh, thank God for for his covering. See, when you make a decision and you not you're not choosing the covering of God. Hallelujah. You don't know what you're opening yourself up to, not only spiritually, but mentally. I do. I, I wouldn't have wanted to bear the weight of the last uh, two years mentally on my own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People have walked away from God. Marriages have failed. You can't do it. All of those things let us know that you can't do it on your own. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says in returning and rest shall be, shall ye be saved. I want you to understand that this is key for your success in, in the year of 2022 and beyond. In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In returning and rest. 
shall I be saved. In returning in rest shall my marriage be saved. In returning in rest shall relationships be saved. In returning in rest shall uh, uh, my relationship with my kids be saved. In returning in rest shall my business be saved. In returning in rest shall my ministry be saved. You mean you're saying pastor many? Yeah, uh, there's there's a lot of us that have been trying to do things on our own for our ministries these last couple of years. We we thought we had the answer. But it's going to be in your returning and rest shall your ministry ministries are going to be saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You didn't have the answer before the pandemic. You didn't have it during the pandemic. And even uh, after the pandemic, you won't, you will never have the answers. Hallelujah. I thank God that in these last couple of years that my wife and I have, have learned to lean into God more than ever. But you know what? We started actually before the pandemic, going after him and uh, fasting, going. And I'm not saying this to brag, but it was just our reality. We were going after him uh, in the word. We were going after him uh, in fasting. Uh, and when the pandemic happened, we we weren't we weren't, you know, you know, sometimes life can uh, sometimes suck a punch you. But thank God, because we our minds were set toward going after God, we just felt like, oh God, we're gonna have to dig in, dig in even more. Glory to God. Now I know that 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 wasn't everybody's reality, but thank God that that was my reality. Thank God that that was a Lady Tammy's reality. We were going after God, uh, in an aggressive manner before the pandemic hit. And I'm not, I, I, and again, I don't wanna, I'm, I'm gonna say as Lady Tammy said, I don't wanna give the pandemic any more glory. And I'm not saying this to give the pandemic any glory, but I'm just saying, you know, when you make decisions, your decisions are everything. Hallelujah. Your decisions are everything. I want you to understand it's in returning and arrest that you're going to be saved, your ministry, your marriage, your family, your relationships, glory to God, in returning and rest. It's in your returning to doing what you know to do and resting, uh, having faith in your choice to return. Glory to God. Now that's worth the price of admission right there. It's in returning to doing what you know to do, and then having faith in the choice to return. Meaning that I'm not gonna to try to figure it out. I'm not gonna depend on my own strength. I'm gonna trust you to do what you said you would do. Glory to God, glory to God. Now, I wanna take you over to uh, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, glory to God, hallelujah. First Samuel, the third chapter. And again, we're talking about the word behind thee. Now, first Samuel, you want to find out that Eli had allowed his son's uh, sin to go unchecked. Uh, he had allowed his sin, their sin to go unhindered, uh, uh, just, just totally unchecked. But in, in first Samuel three, you're going to find that the Bible tells us that the word had become precious. And again, we're still talking about the word behind thee. The word was precious in those times that there was no open vision and even the lamp had gone out in the temple. This is under Eli's watch. The lamp had gone out in the temple. Now in verse uh, Exodus 27 verses 20 and 21, you, you will understand that the Bible tells us that the, that the uh, light was never to go out in the temple. It was to always be kept burning. And so here in 1 Samuel 3, we find out that Eli, again, had allowed his son's uh, uh, sin to go unchecked. The word had become precious. Uh, there was no open vision and the lamp had went out in the temple. Why, Why are these things happening? 
Why are these things happening? Why? Because Eli isn't where he was supposed to be relationally uh, with God. So again, I want you to understand he had allowed his son's sin to go unchecked. Uh, there was that the word had become precious. Uh, there was no open vision. The lamp had gone on. Now, none of these things have to happen. If our if we keep our relationship where it needs to be with God, the word doesn't have to become precious in our lives. We don't have to uh, have times of not having any vision uh, for our lives or anything else uh, if our relationships are kept intact and where they're supposed to be uh, in God. Our light don't have to go out in the temple. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All of these things can be guarded against if our relationships are kept where they're supposed to be. Now, the call of Samuel was a three three part process, basically. Uh, but that process shows how far from God Eli actually was. Uh, that three part process introduces Samuel as hearing God and even uh, receiving instructions as to what God wanted to take place. So first Samuel shows us, this third chapter shows us how far uh, from God Eli actually had become. But then it shows us the introduction of learning to, uh, of Samuel learning to hear uh, and receive from the voice of God. So I want you to understand, if you're young in your faith, God still wants you to be able to hear. And if you have spent any length of time uh, being saved uh, for certainty, God wants you to know his voice. He wants you to be able to clearly and distinctly recognize when he's speaking, what he's speaking, be able to receive instructions from here we're, from him. We're talking about the word behind the, and I told you that the word behind behind the it will instruct, guide, make ways, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So first Samuel 3 and 11, um, I want you to understand that uh Samuel is, is receiving instruction. It says, And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a do a thing in Israel, which both the ears of everyone that hear it uh shall shall tingle. So here, here Samuel is receiving instructions from the Lord. I want you to understand that God needs men and women that knows his voice, that he can talk to, and that he can give kingdom direct directions, that he can give kingdom directives. God doesn't want you and I to be uh, in the dark. He doesn't want us to uh, be surprised by certain things. He wants men and women that he can talk to and give kingdom uh, directives. Uh, Gideon in Judges 6, uh, 36 uh, through 40. Um, the Bible lets us know how the Gideon was unsure of his calling. Uh, he was hesitant. He was insecure. Uh, he, was, he, he wasn't he was confident. God doesn't want men and women, his men and women, to be unsure, to be hesitant. He doesn't want us to lack confidence. You know, the Bible says that uh, that Gideon fleeced, fleeced God, which isn't it, which isn't a problem. It's, the fleecing isn't a problem. It's just about where you are. We know that the Bible says that that Gideon Gideon's fleece where he wanted uh, uh, the, to be dry and then wet everywhere else. Then he wanted it to be wet and dry everywhere where else there's nothing wrong with the fleece because Gideon is seeking um directions from God there's nothing wrong with the fleece but God doesn't want you to stay there glory to God he doesn't want you to stay at that point of having to fleece him nothing wrong with with the fleece nothing wrong with the fleece at all because I've I've I've, I've heard you know Different preachers say, you know, uh, you know, that he shouldn't have had to uh, fleece God. But however, um, uh, 
That's where he was relationally. That's where he was as far as his maturity in Christ. And so, again, I want you to understand nothing wrong with the fleets, nothing at all. But we aren't to stay there. God wants us to mature and to grow up and be able to uh, uh, have a relationship with us beyond the fleece. Glory to God. Glory to God. We have to grow up into him so that we don't have to fleece him. Glory to God. We have to mature beyond the fleece. I want you to understand, it says that, uh, I want you to understand, the word doesn't have to be rarely heard. It doesn't have to become uh, precious. Our eyes don't have to grow dim naturally or spiritually if we stay free of sin. And I want you to understand, don't tolerate the sin of others, especially uh, the sin of, of leaders. If you know that a leader is 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 uh, is in act have as active sin in their lives, him or her, him or her, don't tolerate it. Just because they have the title of, of leadership, don't tolerate it. Why? Because for your life, for your family, you don't want the word to become rarely heard. You don't want the word to become precious. The way that we do that is by not tolerating sin. Our eyes don't have to grow dim naturally or spiritually. Our eyes don't have to grow dim naturally or spiritually. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We don't have to miss an event like the like the light being out in the temple. Like Eli. That's a very, a very serious event that took place. And he missed it because his eyes were, were dim. Well, my prayer for you in 2022 is that your eyes would never grow dim. And that you wouldn't miss a monumental event ever again in your life. Glory to God. And that the word would never become precious. And that there would always be vision. Glory to God. For your life, for your marriage, for your ministry for your family. Glory to God. We have to have vision. And we don't have to allow the light to go out in the temple or not be aware of it. Glory to God. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Don't lose your spiritual perception. Don't lose the ability to discern, to see, to hear, or to receive the things of God, the word, the word behind thee, glory to God, the word behind thee, hallelujah. Exodus 14, Exodus 14, 20, the word came behind Israel and protected them. It was darkness to the enemy, but light unto them. Hallelujah, the word behind thee, the word behind thee. Let me read this scripture to you. Genesis. Glory to God. I, I love this. We're talking about the word behind me. We're talking about the word behind me. Genesis 3 and 8. And it says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day. The voice of God moves. The voice of God moves. Ezekiel 43 and 2, it says that God's voice is like many waters, meaning that it's diverse, meaning that it's diverse. Uh, what it sounds like to you, it may not sound the same way to me. What it sounds like uh, to me, it, it, it may not sound um, that same way to you. Um, I like to say it like this, you know, why would God speak to me uh, and sound like someone else. That's just confusion. But what I would like to say with myself, now this is just with me. I have had God speak to me in my own voice, but the wisdom that uh, that was contained, I knew that it wasn't my wisdom. Glory to God. And so 
I'm able to recognize that it was God speaking, leading, and guiding. Even though it was my, my voice, the wisdom that it contained, I knew that it was beyond my thinking, beyond my intellect, uh, and even beyond my own choosing for myself. And so I like to say it like that, you know, and, and I know that that's not a, a end all be all, but for myself, you know, there has been times that God has spoke to me. It sounded like me, my voice, but it contained a, a level of wisdom that I knew that it was beyond my intellect, beyond my choosing. Uh, and so I want you to understand, it says that the voice of God is like many what God can speak to us in varied ways. And this is why I told you earlier, my prayer as of late has been uh, God, I don't want to just be locked in on you speaking to me audibly. You may want to speak to me through a situation, through a circumstance, uh, through prayer, uh, through your word. I want to be open enough to, 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 to be willing to you speaking to me beyond your audible voice. And so the Bible says that his his voice is like many, meaning he can speak in various ways, in very, in varied ways. Now, it takes even a level of maturity for you to even get there to understand that God doesn't just only speak audibly. He can speak through a situation, a circumstance. Uh, I've even... Uh, had God speak to me through a, a, a commercial or through a conversation with someone. Again, his voice is like many waters. It's varied, it's diverse, meaning what he sounds like to you is, is going to be different what it sounds like to me or even how he may choose to answer. Now, let me give you a couple of more scriptures here. Uh, just to, and we're going to wrap this up. In Revelation, uh, the 19th chapter, glory to God. I pray that you're getting something out of this. Hallelujah. The word behind it. Revelation 19, uh, 6. It says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Again, voice of many waters, very uh, various. It's, it's going to be varied. His voice is varied. It's not one sounded very. So I want you to understand, don't get locked in to hearing God one way. He can answer us in various ways. He can speak to us. He can guide us. He can lead us. He could course correct all of that in various ways. Way. So please don't get locked into only hearing God one way or only hearing God through a certain person. He can he can speak to us in varied ways. Glory to God. Glory to God. The, the, the Bible says that uh, it, it describes it as many waters. Then it describes it as thundering. Uh, I want you to understand that God's voice is 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 loud, but it's also uh, very distinct. Glory to God. Uh, it's described again as many waters. Then it's described as as thundering. So it can be loud, but also very distinct. Glory to God. It's not always in a, 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 a loud rush of waters. It can be it can be small. It can be quiet. It can be very distinct. And so this is why I want you to understand. It takes your mature. It takes your uh, maturation, your maturing in Him, to be able to uh, hear and to be able to distinguish Him, His voice when life gets loud. Glory to God. The word behind thee. The word behind thee. Now, Revelation 14. Revelation 14. Glory to God. Revelation 14, 2, it says, And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. Again, it's saying the voice of many waters. And why am I reading this? I, I, I'm, I'm reading this to really drive home the point that God's voice can be varied. 
but you have to be able to distinguish it. It says the voice of many waters and as uh, the voice of a great thunder. Again, it's, it's describing it as a thunder. And I heard the voice of hearts harping with the heart. See, I want you to understand that you have to uh, not only just be able, you have to recognize that God's voice can be, uh, it can be loud, but you need to be able to distinguish it. It can be quiet. It can be soft but you need to be able to distinguish it. And to be able to do that, you need to be in relationship with God. You need to be in relationship with him. Glory to God. The word behind it, the word behind it. Now, I want to read a verse of scripture to you from Job, uh, Job 37. Let me get over there. Job 37. 37, and I'm going to read 1 through 5. And I, I like this. I like these verses of Scripture. Job 37, 1 through 5, it says, At this also my heart trembled and is moved out of his place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice, the noise of his voice, and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He directeth it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. Glory to God. After it, a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of his excellency, with the voice of his excellency, and will not stay them when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he which we cannot comprehend. It says that he thundereth with his with the voice of of his excellency. Let me say it again. It says that he thundereth with the voice of his excellency. I'm reading these 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 uh verses of scripture in in uh Job 37 just to let you know that to drive it home even further the need to be able to not only know God's voice but to be able to distinguish it and understand it's not going to always be loud, but it could be it could be in the stillness. But you need to be able to distinguish it. There's a lot of voices in the world today. There's a lot of voices in the world today, but you need to be able to distinguish the one voice that can do anything but fail. Glory to God. The word behind thee. The word behind thee. The word behind thee, the verse, verse in uh, the 21st verse of Isaiah 30, it says that, that this is the way, walk ye in it when you turn to the right, when you turn to the left. And that suggests a place of intimacy with God and a level of maturity to be able to understand that that word that's behind you is going before you. It's making ways, it's giving direction, it's course correcting, it's providing, it's making a way, it's opening, it's closing doors. And you have to trust that that word behind you has uh, 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 an added advantage in seeing and knowing what you don't see and know. As I said, when my son was younger and had first began to ride his bicycle, I could walk behind him and direct him with my voice. We have to get to a level that we can trust God. That if he says go left, we go left. If he says go right, we go right. If he says slow down, we slow down. But then there's going to be those times where he's going to propel us forward. Why? Because there may be needed separation between us and, and our enemy between us and a situation, between us and a circumstance. We have to trust that the word behind me is going to make the difference in our lives, in our marriage, in our ministries, in our families. Glory to God. The word behind thee. The word behind thee. Glory to God. Listen, I pray that you have gotten something out of this teaching on today. I pray that it will propel you forward uh, in your faith, that it will propel you forward in your prayer life, that it will propel you forward 
uh, in going after the word of God in a new way, in a in a more aggressive way. Listen, our it's our returning and rest that we're going to be saved. That's Isaiah 30 and 15. It's in our returning and our resting in the fact that we have returned, that we're going to be saved, that our family is going to be saved, that our marriage is going to be saved, that our business is going to be saved, that relationships are going to be saved, that relationships with our kids are going to be saved. Glory to God, the word behind thee, the word behind thee. I want to challenge you that in this year of 2020, 2022, that you will allow the word behind thee to do what it came to do. The word behind thee, glory to God, glory to God, the word behind thee, my God. You need to understand again that the word behind thee is pushing it's course correcting. Hallelujah. It's guiding. It's opening. It's closing doors. It's making ways, protecting. Hallelujah. It's favoring. It's providing. It's making ways. It's healing. It's uprooting. Glory to God. It's making the crooked straight. Hallelujah. It's giving favor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word behind me. Hallelujah. Listen. I pray that you've gotten something out of this teaching. And in 2022, it's time for us to go to another level in him, in all areas of our lives. It's time to go to another level. So let's pray. And we're going and I'm going to get out of your way. Father, it's in the name of Jesus that I pray and I come to you asking and thanking you uh, for this word, God, for uh, for you ascending your son uh, to make a way back to you. We thank you, God. We thank you for uh, an opportunity to, to serve you, to know you, uh, to get to know your word. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for your kindness. God, we thank you for being the God can, that can do all. We thank you for your love. Hallelujah. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you that you sent us a comforter. Glory to God. And God, we ask that this year of 2022 that we will experience success on all levels and in all areas of our lives in an exceeding abundant way, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for new revelation. We thank you for new wisdom. We thank you for new understanding where your word is concerned. We thank you for a, a, a new prayer life, God, a, a, a prayer life that's passionate a, and a prayer life that will that will last longer than our troubles. Glory to God. Thank you, oh God, that we're going to get to see you show up in our lives as never before in this year, year of 2022, God. And we just say thank you. Thank you that you're going to hear that you have healed our bodies, our minds, our spirits. Thank you that you have healed our, our relationships. Thank you that you have healed our marriages. Thank you, oh God, for being a God that, that cannot fail. Thank you that with you, hallelujah, with you, all things are possible. And for this, we say thank you. Hallelujah. For this, we say thank you. We're thanking you, God, that this year, 2022, we're going to hear of more salvations. Glory to God. As never before, we're going to actually hear of uh, the lesbian being saved, the homosexual being saved, the murderer coming to faith. In the name of Jesus, the rapist coming to faith, God. In the name of Jesus, and we say thank you. Because we understand that the extension of your love includes all of us. And it's not because of what we've done, but it's because of who you are and what you came to do that we're going to hear these, these uh, testimonies, God. And we just say thank you. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I love you with the love of the Lord. And until next time, continue winning in prayer.
I'll see you next time. An employment issue. Father God, we do thank you for those that may be facing an employment issue. Father, your word declares that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. And you turn it, turn it there with us ever you will. So God, we just thank you for those who are in power. We thank you for favor with those that are in power, that they will look favorably upon us, God. And so we just thank you for victory in all circumstances all situation. God, we thank you for reports of of not not only one job offer, God, but we thank you in advance for multiple job offers, God, with good pay and good benefits, God. And so, God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise right now. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Jennifer Reddy, and I am Winning in Prayer TV's Digital Media Manager. We are so happy you joined us today, and we can't wait to get to know each and every one of you. Thank you for watching, and have a blessed day.